What's going on guys? I'm Zachary Gray and today we're out here along the coastal areas in South Louisiana looking for specifically one snake. Now marsh snakes are typically really difficult to see but right now they're going to be one of the most common snakes out and uh, that's what I'm hoping to show you guys today. As many of you know, Louisiana and many other areas along the Gulf Coast have been getting absolutely hammered by hurricanes this year, and the increased flooding has displaced a ton of animals from the marshes, especially the incredibly elusive Gulf salt marsh snakes. Today, we're going to be getting up close with these brackish water snakes and trying to catch as many as possible while they're out, hopefully showing you why these snakes are completely harmless as a species and should be left alone when seen after storms. Here we go, got a marsh snake. Here we go. Oh, nice. Here we go. Hello, little buddy. <laughs> Have a look at this one. Little medium-sized marsh snake. He is gorgeous. Now, what's interesting about this one, have a look at that blotching. He's half striped and half blotched. You can see on the top there, he's got one big stripe, and then the rest is blotching down the sides. Now, this actually used to be considered a different snake, and uh, they still kind of are in a sense. They call this a regular, they just kind of call this a salt marsh snake rather than a gulf salt, which that's kind of changed over the past couple of decades to where this is kind of still considered a gulf salt marsh snake because they intermix so much. But technically speaking, gulf salt marsh snakes don't have that blotching. They're fully striped, which is really cool. This is a medium-sized one. These ones get just as big as the fully striped ones. That has nothing to do with size or anything else. And they are still considered the exact same species nowadays but really cool little snake. They're gonna be hiding up all up in this grass right now with everything that's flooded. And uh, they're just a really cool snake. These guys are normally super rare, but once again, after hurricanes, this is the best time to find this snake. I normally don't see these guys at all. You'll see one or two if you go kayaking for them up in the brackish mangrove areas, but uh, the best time to find them, right after a hurricane. These snakes are usually pretty hard to find, but the last 48 hours, they've been everywhere and people are seeing them washing up all along the coast. What's unfortunate is they're often killed due to looking very similar to water moccasins. There's a little one. Right here. Got him, got him, got him. Here we go, that's how you find them. All up in this, this stuff that's washed up from the hurricane flooding. This is a little baby one, and he's a blotch too. These guys are a water snake species and they carry a lot of your regular water snake traits. They bite. They musk on you, but I think that this is one of the coolest water snake species in Louisiana, or maybe even along the Gulf Coast. Now this is actually one of the smallest ones that I've ever seen. Look at this belly. They've kind of got this ruby colored belly, kind of this dark red coloration with a little stripe down the center. It's really cool. Now this wouldn't be a newborn, but uh, he is a yearling, I'd say. This was probably last year's baby. They're born about half this size. And what's really cool about this snake species is they give birth to live young, like other water snake species. And that is a big deal when it comes to surviving here. This area, this little section right here, is one of just a few natural coastlines still along this area. And what's really sad is a lot of the nesting habitats of a lot of species, birds and reptiles, have been completely decimated here in Louisiana. And since this species gives birth to live young, they don't need to nest, they don't need to lay eggs like other coastal snake species. So they have a huge advantage in that. However, they still do need these coastal areas to be able to live. However, for a snake like this, they're called a marsh snake. They live back, way back in the marshes. And that's really, really good for this snake because for one, people don't see them a lot and they're not getting killed. But once again, right after hurricanes like this, these guys are gonna be the most common snake along the coast here for a few days, probably three or four days. This is gonna be the number one snake that people are seeing. And after that, you're just not gonna be seeing many of them anymore. Even though marsh snakes are the main snakes being affected by this flooding, other common aquatic species will also be very active during this time. Boy, a water snake. This is on the other side of the marsh. This is a little Mississippi green, little baby water snake. Look at him. Look at, ah! Look at try to bite. He's a cutie. This is a little newborn green. He's very cute. These are a mostly freshwater species. However, they will get up into these brackish marshes. It's okay, bud. It's okay, we're gonna put you back, I promise. Green waters are really cool. I've seen actually a few of them this year, more than normal actually. 
But it's a really cool species. When they're this young, they kind of look like a diamondback with all their patterning. But as he gets older, he's going to lose a little bit of that. It's all right, buddy. They mostly eat fish and frogs. They're going to be cruising all up in these cypress mangroves, looking for fish, frogs, crawfish, anything that they can get. They're a super adaptable species and super common here along the Gulf Coast. You'll find them virtually everywhere. He is really tiny. Cute little guy, but not what we're looking for. Just on the opposite side of the marsh here though, so that's to be expected that they're going to get more of these water snakes rather than the, uh, the marsh snakes. But really cool find. We're going to go ahead and put him back and keep looking for marsh snakes. The coastal marshes of Louisiana are really beautiful, vast environments home to thousands of different animals. But the large amount of coastal building and digging out of the shorelines, not to mention hurricanes, has decreased the amount of natural shorelines in this area drastically. Because of this, after major flooding from hurricanes, many marsh-dwelling species are washed right up to where people live, and the snakes especially are killed on sight, which is an absolute shame. Marsh snakes are the biggest victim of this, but many other species such as otters, minks, alligators, and even many kinds of fish suffer from this every single year. This is a snake. Another marsh. It's a bigger one. Here we go. Ah! Bit me. Bit me, bit me. It's okay, bud. It's all right. Wow, they're all up in here right now. Here we go. That is a much bigger Gulf salt marsh. Fully striped this one. Oh, have a look at this. Look at his eye right there. This snake has something called snake fungal disease, something pretty common along a lot of. Uh, a lot of aquatic snake species here in the United States, unfortunately. I'm not sure the exact specifics as to what causes it or how snakes even get it, but I know it's really messing up a lot of really special aquatic snakes out here, especially marsh snakes, mud snakes, and rainbow snakes are easily susceptible to it. Of course, many different snakes can get it, but those are the ones that are hit really hard by it. So uh, I don't think we're gonna hold on to this one just because you know, it really doesn't look too healthy. You can see he's got some little parasites right there. Yeah, this snake's really messed up, so we're gonna put him back up in this marsh in a second. But uh, this is pretty typical to see amongst marsh snakes, unfortunately, out here. Really nice size. I'm hoping to find a big, pretty one. This one's kind of a dingier, duller color. And I just kind of saw him right under the grass. They really have gotten washed out of this area with all of this, uh, this wind and all the flooding that we've gotten in the last couple days. They really got washed out of their natural areas. So that's just why we're seeing so many, but awesome little guy, and we're gonna go ahead and put him back. All right, see you little buddy. Watch him take off. There he goes. Boop, boop, boop. Man, these snakes are everywhere, and they're a lot harder to catch than you might think. The marsh grass and water are perfect escapes. Not to mention, marsh snakes are really good swimmers. I see a snake. Look, it's a marsh. It's a marsh. There's two. There's two. That one's bigger. Where'd he go? There he is. Here we go. Oh, wait, he's getting away from me. Oh, that's a nice one. Heck yeah. Here we go. That is nice. Look at this one. He is gorgeous, fully striped. He's got one little parasite on him. This one's kind of a partly blotched one over here. Have a look at that. That's about as good as we could ask for right there. This is the biggest one I've ever seen on my left. And this one's a pretty average looking one on the right. They've got really gorgeous bellies. There's definitely a lot of marsh snakes out today, that's for sure. The last 48 hours, I've seen more marsh snakes that I've really seen my entire life. I've never actually gone out to these areas after a hurricane to look for them like this. And it is genuinely true that this is the snake that is everywhere right after hurricanes, right after things wash up. The water got to about there the other day. And I know that because I was over here the other day looking at snakes. And there was definitely a lot of these guys yesterday too. In fact, I'm probably seeing a few of the same ones that I saw yesterday. Because when they get flooded out like this, they get a little bit confused and they'll stay in that area for a bit until the water is fully back down and they've kind of got their wits about them. So what's interesting is when all the salt water floods into these little freshwater marshes, it floods out amphiumas and it also floods out crawfish, which is the main thing that these snakes eat. Whoop, it's all right, buddy. So when salt water floods into that because of hurricanes, these guys have a lot less to eat. Now, of course, this species is a lot more adaptable than a lot of the other delicate species that have been wiped out. And that's why they're still here. These guys can eat frogs, they can eat fish, and that's why they do so well. That is a really nice batch of Gulf salt. We've caught quite a few today, and uh, I've got them over there in a snake bag. We're gonna be letting them all go, of course, but uh, I really do wanna show you just the amount of marsh snakes that we've caught today. We've caught a crazy amount. All right, well, I think we had a pretty successful day of catching marsh snakes. Have a look at that. We've got in my left hand, one, two, three, 
four really nice sized ones, and five medium to small sized ones. Have a look at that. Now I would be lying if uh, I said this was the most marsh snakes ever caught because yesterday I went out and was actually around this area catching them and there were a lot more the other day. Unfortunately, we weren't filming them, but there were a lot more. I probably saw about 30 or 40 of them that day. I missed a couple today, but I missed a bunch yesterday as well. But uh, if you can have a look at this, you've got some blotched ones in there, some fully striped ones, small, little, big. This one up here is probably about as big as they get. And it did take a little while for them to calm down like this. Uh, after you handle water snakes for a minute, specifically marsh snakes, a lot of the times they will calm down. They'll stop biting, they'll stop trying to musk on you. And uh, that's basically what we're seeing with these snakes. Although one of them is trying to musk on me right now. Uh, that's just one out of nine. So that, that's about right. I love the little blotched one. There's one that's got a more white coloration. They've all got gorgeous bellies. And that is just a handful of snakes right there. And of course, we're gonna be letting these snakes go. We wanna keep seeing these snakes in these marshes. They're just a really cool species. They they basically do the exact same things that water snakes do but for the marshes so they are a very important part of these ecosystems they help feed gators and egrets all those other bigger predators they also help to control other things other little fish species and all stuff like that they're just a really cool snake all around I love seeing them out here and right after hurricanes this is the only time of year that you're gonna see these snakes like this all other times of the year they're genuinely hard to find you'll find one or two when you go looking for them and nowadays people are gonna be seeing these everywhere now, if you live along the coast and you get hit by, hit by a hurricane, you're most likely going to see these in your yard if you live right along the coast. And that's the unfortunate part of this is that most of these snakes are going to be getting killed this time of year because they're all getting washed out of the marshes. People are seeing them in their yard and they're going to think that they're water moccasins. They've got that dark, dingy coloration and they live in the water. People, especially in Louisiana and Mississippi, are just going to straight up assume that it's a water moccasin. And that's really unfortunate because they're a completely harmless snake and I love seeing them out here. So if you do see one of these snakes, please do leave it alone. You can definitely tell that they're not moccasins by the stripes because moccasins are not striped. Moccasins, when they're young, will have blotching, but they won't look like this. Really beautiful snakes, but we don't want to hold on to these guys for too long, so we're going to go right back along the coast and let these guys go. This thing's a good spot to let them go. Got some water. And lots of grass from high there. Water here. All right, now watch this. Really careful, because these guys are all about to vanish. Ready? One, two, three. Whoop! I love doing that. That's so cool. Go, buddy. Go, go, you're free. Well, guys, really hope you enjoyed this. Spent a lot of time out here catching snakes today, and it was really fun. So if you did enjoy it, please subscribe and leave a like for more content. That's all for now. We will see you guys next time.